uh, some of the local government areas. I mean, there was a riot act to that effect. And I remember Governor Farauta calling on parents not to harbor or condone some of their children who engage in this crime. What's the level of commitment to cooperation from parents? And what's the update about, about these boys? Yeah, there's tremendous improvement. And uh, I assure you that uh, Yola is getting safer and the security agents are doing the best they are doing. And with all these things, you can also accept, even from the fact that uh, our bad governance riots you know, did not get out of hand, and nothing as outrageous was equally recorded. So to tell you that since the deputy governor spoke about that, there's been campaigns and a lot of advocacies and movement to households and families, and uh, people have gotten it right. But you will understand about the content of the Sheila boys and their operations. These are uh, boys that have strayed into the place. Sometimes the link uh, is a, it's a situation where they, their parents are not even there. You know, their parents are not in Yula. Quite a number of them, you know, are migrants from other places. But uh, the security agents have taken good enough work. And the CP out there on ground, you know, when you go, there are updates. And they've done a lot when it comes to mapping to get the patterns. And they've done their own base and have gotten some of them off the streets. And I can assure you, uh, in, the, in, in the past few days now, you cannot notice anything like that because nobody is reporting. When you want to have something to agree with it, you try the police and they will tell you that even their crime diary you know, is low as far as records in that aspect is concerned. So the government is not uh, sleeping over that issue, and that uh, the parents are also being engaged. There's a lot of enlightenment, and the traditional rulers are also hand-on trying to put on their own best, and they're doing it. And uh, there are comprehensive policies coming up mm -hmm. to ensure that registrations are done along the line, good enough for every child to be in school. And most recently, he passed on an executive order stopping plundering in the environment which you can see young people do and some of them you know with the capacity to tamper with a number of things you know engaging in domestic crimes and whatnot so that is taking him to a position where he's taking very absolute stand to ensure that all children are registered in school and that a lot is done at least for communities to be engaged at least for everybody to ensure that no child is to be on the street. I think with that particular strategy, I can assure you that it is not only about the Sheila any longer, it is going to be about an Adamawa state where every child is engaged in doing something. Uh, please uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. These kids are called Sheila boys, but sadly there are girls in this gang. Am I correct? You said? I said these kids are called Sheila boys, but there are girls in that gang. Am I correct? Yeah, with minimal record. <laughs> you know, girls are not too much engaged in it. You know, there are quite a few, but uh, I don't think it's, it's, it's an affair that engages girls, you know, in most cases. Perhaps where you see it is just a youth problem that is, is uh, making virtually quite a number of them to be engaged in drugs. And definitely they might have some of their own girls hanging around them to help them do such things. But uh, the record doesn't show that girls are engaged in that. Okay. Mainly boys as you hear the name Sheila Boys. Okay. So because you've just alleged that uh, these kids are migrants from other places, let's talk about this uh, executive order. Because what I know so far is that uh, three executive orders have been signed by the state government to tackle crime and insecurity in Adamawa State. The previous ones are Executive Order 1 of 2020, 2021, and 2022. But many say these orders have not effectively tackled crime. But another one has just been signed, banning the activities of scavengers in the state. Why this? You know, when you look at this executive order at this moment, it's an executive order that comes with a lot of plan, you know, to ensure that things are done rightly. Because you don't just dish out an order and just remain where it is, except you have something that is going to back the working so that you can get it right. And that is done. Because if you move around and you see the kind of detail given to the security services and what they're able to do in the process, you'll notice that they're not just uh, doing it to just make something drastic, but also working towards uh, processes to get some of these ones reformed. 
I met to understand that there is a gradual process which has been built, you know, on the aspect of uh, reform which the government is putting into being so that the social welfare will now work out what we'll do with some of these boys that are really out there and not getting things to be done. So the executive order that came from the governor at this moment is the one that came with the plan of things to implement and to ensure that things are really done. So first, the records. Number two, the process. And then number three, how to get it right. And how to get it right, I believe, is what he's doing. And when you come over and you try to find out what is presently happening in the government, you will notice that uh, it is getting balanced and virtually everybody is getting to participate in the process. Now, when you listen to the local radio and you hear comments and you move around the schools and you hear the awareness campaigns going on, you know, it is certain that something will be done. Yeah. And even at the level of uh, the religious leaders, you know, the Islamic scholars are also talking about it. And uh, basically, in the churches, you know, it is all there. And most importantly, you can see the youth coming together. At least all these issues have been tabled particularly to do with that aspect. Yeah. And I believe something serious, you know, is going to happen, and we will have a free and an open society that is good enough for everybody to live in. All right. You know, it's impressive to hear that uh, Governor Fintiri is the first governor in Northeast Geopolitical Zone to approve the payment of 70,000 Naira as minimum wage to kick off this month of August. So how does this development address allegations of misplaced priority, issue of public mistrust and poor distribution of wealth uh, levied against this, this administration? Pardon? I could not get you. Public mistrust of what? Did you get that question? Yeah, I repeat it again, sorry. All right. I'm having a glitch around here. Okay, so I said it's very impressive to hear that uh, Governor Fintir is the first governor in the Northeast to approve the payment of 70,000 Naira as new minimum wage, and because it's actually going to kick off this month. So how does this development yeah. address allegations of misplaced priority, issue of public mistrust, and poor distribution of wealth? Uh, leveled against uh, this administration? Yeah, most precisely by who? <clears throat> I guess you must be making speculations around what uh, the Sahara reporters got there. But uh, let me just be quick to let you know that most sincerely that was a frivolous allegation. And if you really want to come to a place where budgets are given and implementations are done rightly, you know, I assure you Adamawa State is one place. If you step into Adamawa State, and you see the infrastructure development and things moving on, and even the confidence. And the fact that Governor Amadou Fintri is one governor that has timely paid his salaries since he came. You know, the moment it is 20th, every civil servant receives his salary. And that has given enough confidence, you know, in the administration. You know, in addition to the fact that uh, the number of some of these things, are, they're quite impressive. You know, the school infrastructure is going on. And when you come in, in 21 of the local governments, there are more schools being built, and they've sprouted well, and they're almost being finished. And I wonder where some of these people give their own allegations to say that nothing is being done really to make it up, or there is eroding of confidence, public trust in Adamawa State. I think in Adamawa State, if you are to wait uh, the, the mood, Sincerely, the people out there are happy about what is happening because they can move and tell you that we've seen this progression from one infrastructure to the other one being finished timely. And in that kind of an environment, it will be extremely difficult, except somebody who wants to speculate to say that things are not moving on right. Things have been right, and uh, you have to be on ground to see exactly what that is. You know, leave uh, uh, speculators around that talk about frivolities that are not sincere. I know they talk about what budgets are, but not the implementation. The implementation is something else. But I tell you that uh, in Edmore State, the process is quite transparent and virtually everything is taking shape. And if you want any information to do with that, you get it handy on the internet. So to my mind, it, it, it's not an allegation that we have to take and think that it's something serious to worry about. Because the man is already moving and he is doing what is expected of him.
All right. The governor has shown some level of commitment to sports developments in the state. I'm very curious. What drives this passion? Well, you know,